Evil Dead the Game is an asymmetrical PvPvE multiplayer that came out on 13th of May 2022 and very quickly became popularized by a crowd of fans of the franchise, gamers reminiscing Friday the 13th and some others tired of Dead by Daylight. Its debut marked one of the most popular in the franchise's gaming history and the first to grace our next-gen consoles and high-tech PCs with the sights of Ash and his crew versus the Kandarian Demon which takes the form of several demons from both the movies and the TV show Ash vs the Evil Dead. As this is an asymmetrical game, the format the developers decided to go for is of 4 survivors vs 1 demon. The players on the survivor side have the choice of 4 different classes to a total of 15 characters as of today. You've got warriors which are the high damage melee tanks, hunters are the nimble high damage ranged weapons class, leaders buff warriors and hunters, and supports heal the team. The demon choices are the skeletons army led by Evil Ash, the Warlord and its zombie looking deadites, the stealthier puppeteer and its extremely agile and ranged units, and finally the Witch Plaguebringer and its army of skeletons and a pit deadite that resembles more like a swamp monster. The survivors play by collecting melee and ranged weapons, healables, matchsticks which help to light up the environment and manage your fear levels, and pink F which gives you points to spend on your in-match skills to make your character stronger. Survivors need to be careful not to make noise initially so as not to give away their position to the demon, which includes driving cars and shooting ranged weapons. Once the demon has found the survivors, the real cat and mouse chase begins. The demon is the real showrunner here. It will set traps in specific set locations and spawn enemies at any location it desires as long as it has enough Inferno Energy. Inferno Energy is what powers the demon's abilities and it can be collected as orbs scattered around the map or passively gained if the demon has leveled up its abilities enough. Demons can interact with the survivors by means of possessing the units that are on the map or by possessing survivors if their fear levels are higher enough. Cars and trees can also be possessed, both dealing damage and increasing the fear levels of the survivors. survivors Survivors must initially collect 3 map pieces which will then unlock 2 new objectives. Once those are done, the Dark Ones are unlocked and can be attacked. If survivors are still standing after the Dark Ones are banished, then the match becomes a rush to protect the book from destruction by the demon. Needless to say, the teamwork is essential if the survivors are to win a match. The demon is powerful and at present creates a challenging experience even to seasoned players. The euphoria of winning a match as a survivor has become the biggest reward of all as the demon can easily 1v1 split up survivors. Survivors need to stay together, loot quickly and move even quicker from objective to objective if they are to prevent the demon from becoming all powerful to a point of no return and certain defeat. During the first few months after release, both demon and survivor players found mechanical exploits where demons could chain endless attacks and cancel attack animations to their advantage, and survivors could infinite heal to the point of invincibility. The game also suffered from several game-breaking bugs where cars will fall off maps and survivors will get stuck on windows when trying to vault. I actually think the late one is still there. Since the late September patch, the game has finally reached a point where exploits are virtually gone and most bugs are down to a minimum, but not entirely gone. The game also got its first huge DLC in early September, which introduced two new survivors and one new demon. The new demon in particular has very different mechanics from the previous existing demons, which has shown the devs are willing to diversify the playstyle of the game. Because of the asymmetrical nature of the game, there is obviously a rivalry between demons demon and survivor players. One of the biggest complaints the survivor side has at present is with matchmaking when solo queuing. The constant stream of new players can make it so that seasoned players end up losing a match because their inexperienced buddies either wander off alone into the woods, spend too much time looting, or make too much noise only to eventually fall prey to the demon and its minions. Matchmaking is a problem that most multiplayer games suffer from in the first year, and dedicated developers are bound to improve it as time goes by so that players get matched as per their experience level. If this will happen to Evil Dead the game, only time will tell. Another current issue is that the puppeteer demon has been heavily buffed since the latest patch and there hasn't been a signal from the developers that this will change anytime soon. However, since that change in early September, some survivors are already finding ways of dealing with the buff demon which heavily encourages teamwork and looping the demon using the environment. This issue seems to be heightened by the bad solo queue survivors which lack teamwork and become easy prey for the demon. If the devs will balance that out, it remains to be seen. The developers also have promised additional content in the months to come, including prestige level progressions for the survivors and demons after reaching max level. So would you be willing to play this as it stands, and is it worth playing it almost 5 months after release? 
Short answer is maybe. Evil Dead the game has come a long way since its release and exploits and bugs are down to a minimum. The game is more challenging for the survivors and it can feel daunting to step into Ash's shoes for the first time as the game is quite demon sided at present. If you're solo queuing you might have a hard time initially until you learn the ropes of the game but if you can play as a team with randoms or even team up with a group you'll learn a lot faster and probably win more matches. Playtime ensures that anybody can handle the demon if they play the cards right and winning matches can be as satisfying as ever when your team pulls together. Playing the demon makes you feel like you're creating a real experience and challenge to the survivors like a true game master. It can be rewarding to see survivors falling on your traps and unique, albeit restrictive, to be able to possess structures, minions and survivors themselves. Overpowered demons are unfortunately popular, which don't do the matches justice to anyone, especially high level survivors that are looking for teamwork. Evil Dead the game comes at a time when games like Dead by Daylight continues to complain of its toxic community, Predator Hunting Grounds has peaked, Friday the 13th is no more and Among Us is too casual to be played on next-gen consoles. It's not a perfect game and as every asymmetrical game out there, imbalances are common and might never go away completely. However, it fills a gap in the market perhaps at the right time, until games like Killer Clowns and Texas Chain Massacre get released in 2023. That gives Evil Dead the game plenty of time to fix its issues and solidify its position in the market. If that promise becomes true, only time will tell. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content. I'll see you next time.